courage and humility in preaching. The reason I put the two together is because emotionally, we often feel like they are kind of at odds with each other. Like if you're a really humble, meek person, you won't be courageously forceful on issues that are important in the world where you might get flack. Or if you're forceful and stand your ground and say, thus saith the Lord, I can do no other, people are going to say, that's just arrogant. So I'm putting the two together here, humility and courage. I want to encourage you to be courageous. Now, the reason this is so crucial is because Paul said in 2 Timothy 3, 12, everybody who desires to live a godly life will be persecuted. There's going to be trouble. Jesus said in Matthew 10, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. He said, a, a, a servant is not above his master. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. In other words, the job description of the pastorate is trouble. If you aim to preach faithfully, count on it. Trouble. So you've got to be courageous. How do you do that? What's the source of courage in preaching? Let me just mention two. Prayer. Do you remember Acts chapter 4, verse, I think, 20, 24, 29, not sure, where the disciples are praying and they pray, God, Grant your servants to speak the word of God with boldness while you stretch forth your hand and signs and wonders are done in the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Oh, I have prayed that sequence so often. God, fill us as a people with your Holy Spirit so that we open our mouths and say what needs to be said. Let the chips fall where they will. Don't let us be man-pleasers. So that's the first thing, prayer. And the second thing is trust promises. You can better pray, oh God, make us bold. And then we look to the word of promise. And I'll tell you, I don't think there is any passage in the Bible though there are many of them. In fact, fear not, I think, is probably the most common command in the Bible. But I don't think there's anything more courage-producing, fear-removing, like Romans 8, um, starting at, say, 31. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not with him freely give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, who was raised from the dead, who is indeed in heaven interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Now, if you stopped right there, somebody from the prosperity camp might say, oh, of course they won't separate you from the love of Jesus. He won't let them happen. <laughs> he won't let them happen. If you've got faith enough, famine not going to happen to you. You always have enough to eat. Sword not going to happen to you. Nakedness is not going to happen to you. You'll always have clothing. Jesus promised that you would. You know what the next verse says? Verse 36. We are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. So Paul pulls the plug on that misinterpretation by quoting Psalm 44. These things aren't just threats. They're happening. They're going to happen to him. He's going to have his head chopped off by Nero. Probably that's how he died. And then he says, 
No. In all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, brothers, know the great eight. <laughs> no, live in the great eight of Romans because it will take away your fear. It will make you courageous. It will make you like Esther. If I perish, I perish. I'm doing what I got to do, saying what I got to say for my people. It'll make you like Paul in Acts 20, 24. I don't count my life of any value or as precious to myself, if only I might finish my course and complete the ministry that God gave me to declare the grace of God. Oh, may God make us courageous. Now, here's the link with humility. Have you ever read Isaiah 51, 12 and stopped and scratched your head? What? <laughs> Isaiah 51, 12, God says, I, I am he who comforts you. Who are you to be afraid of man who dies? What's the meaning of that question? Who are you? Who do you think you are to be afraid <laughs> when I'm the one who comforts you? What that means is, Pride pulls you out from under the promises of God and makes you self-reliant, and you fear man. Humility puts you under the promises of God and makes you fearless. That's what he's saying. Who do you think you are not to trust me when I'm the one who comforts you? So, yeah, humility is the key to fearlessness under the promises of God. And what is humility? I think the best two verses on humility in the Bible are probably um, Philippians 2, 3, and 4, which says, uh, do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves? Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And then it refers to Jesus' incarnation and humility. So what is humility? At the heart, and pastors, let's just get this. Humility is looking at other people and regarding them, regarding them, whether they are or not, regarding them as worthy of your service. Doesn't matter whether they're arrogant, doesn't matter whether they're cruel, you're going to go down and do what you can to bring them up into glory, bring them up into faith, bring them up into everlasting joy. That's what humility does. So, humility and courage, hand in hand. Preachers, we've got to have this. So let's go to prayer and let's go to the promises and establish ourselves in lowly servanthood toward our people and powerful fearlessness in the face of opposition.